Kama, why don't you read my wish? Jai Baba, my wish, the lover has to keep the wish of the beloved. My wish for my lovers is as follows. Do not shirk your responsibilities. Attend faithfully to your worldly duties, but keep always at the back of your mind that all this is Baba's. When you feel happy, think Baba wants me to be happy. When you suffer, think Baba wants me to suffer. Be resigned to every situation and think honestly and sincerely. Baba has placed me in this situation. With the understanding that Baba is in everyone, try to help and serve others. I say with my divine authority to each and all that whosoever takes my name at the time of breathing his last comes to me. So do not forget to remember me in your last moments. Unless you start remembering me from now on, it will be difficult to remember me when your end approaches. You should start practicing from now on. Even if you take my name only once every day, you will not forget to remember me in your dying moments. Avatar Meher Baba Ki Jai. Jai Baba. Jai Baba. Avatar Meher Baba Ki Jai. Thank you for reading that. Uh, I think the, the last line holds out a lot of hope, right? Even if you take my name, only once every day, you will not forget to remember me in your dying moments. So what Baba is saying is giving a cheat code. So he says, remember as often as possible. But the cheat code is, even if you do it once a day, hey, I'll take care of you. So with that hope and wish and prayer to Baba, let's get started this morning. One second. Mm -hmm. Okay, we, have, we were on uh, page 116 uh, and we stopped uh, uh, after 26. So any quick uh, thoughts or reactions before we get started? No, so let's uh, start. He's still on, at, on the topic of art and uh, uh, he's taking examples to describe. So let's get started. Avtar Meher Baba Ki Jai. Men of God, artists, and defenders of lovely art. Paul, the real Paul in Jesus' footsteps, first to deny the world and to flee to the desert. But when Anthony visited him after 60 or 70 years, inquired compassionately, are men still building cities? Paul, for whose body lions dug the grave, and Bemus the gentle whom the desert beasts frisked around when he walked abroad at night. And he would draw water from a well and give them cups of it. And Theon, who kept silence for 30 years, and in, in whose eyes an angel stood, and Harat, who even, and Harat, who when a child mocked him, called the child to him and gave him a gold ring and kind advice, so that the child said, Thy manliness I will bear in mind all my life. And Curry the sudden, who never thought twice about dealing a blow, even in a strange earl's house, and all the earl's battlemen at table. So quite a few examples here, but many of them, uh, I think Paul is biblical and then you have uh, uh, some Greek references here. Uh, I think they are all specifically to the story. Oh, I've not finished the line. So let me read the last three lines again. And Curry the sudden, who never thought twice about dealing a blow, even in a strange earl's house and all the earl's battlemen at table, and trusted his life to the manhood of his enemy 
flow C. And it continues. And Macarius, who was a lover beyond all others, to whom God turned, to whom God returned the grapes after their going the entire round of the desert. And Hyperriches, who said, better to eat flesh and drink wine than eat your brother's flesh by backbiting. And Achilles, if thou would sup broth, go down into Egypt. And Milarepa, if you want condiments, put in a few more nettles. And Facnutius, fact to whom God showed his equal in a street singer who had been a robber and who at Facnutius' word threw away his pipes and used his skill in music to bring his mind and heart into harmony. And Isidore, at peace with his wife and an angel guiding the team while he conversed with God. And Flosti, whose rotten ship was seaworthy, enough for an old man to die. And Jal, law lawman and man of love, who slew none, but accepted his own slave. And Bergotra, Bertorak, his wife, who met death bravely with him. So all are examples of the right kind of art. 29. Light, light, Lu subdued the floods. Rama threw a bridge across them. Noah outroared them. Light, light, light on grass and leaf. Petal light of pink and white in the spring. Fruit light of early summer and summer. Snow light about the feet of Taishan or Meru. Moses' woolen shirt, according to Al Junaid. Telimachu's woolen shirt. Milarepa's shirt of woven angel's breath. Light, flood of the mind and dress of the soul. The movement of which in a man through his hands or speech is called art. Beautiful. The golden age, time of the reign of virtue, is in perpetuity. As Bhanu Das showed the false worshipping king in respect to Pandharpur, and paradise is merely the passing landscape of nothingness in the mirrors of the perfect masters. And to use his analogy further, the perfect master uh, will be driving a car, right? So he sees them as a passing paradise, passing landscape, but he knows it's nothingness and he's just seeing it in the mirrors. But the light, I mean, the uh, thing to watch out here is this definition, which is very beautiful. Light, flood of the mind, and dress of the soul. But then he goes on. The movement of which in a man, through his hands or speech, is called art. So, yeah, beautiful, positive interpretation of uh, art. Unless a man takes his stand against the world of a, sh of a dying civilization, Unless he stops discriminating the patterns of shadow and turns his face to the son of the living God, he shall in no wise grow his life into a harvest against his old age and for others. He shall in no wise become a singer of lovely song, a devotee praiser of avatar's deeds, nor shall Sophia with bangled arms and smiling sweetly, come to him and kiss his mouth into an awakening. Unless a man sits down and stops fattening his guts, guts, a convenient symbol of the gross plane, he shall in no wise avoid ruinous belly fat poverty. Unless a man sits down and determines the tone and color of his heart, he shall never be able to obey the seasons, nor himself. 
unless and take stock within his heart, he shall in no wise increase his stature and again become a little child. Save your head and pour dust upon it and wait until he calls for any other mirror but him will deceive you and keep your ass plodding up the dusty road. Sit down like a plant and wait his sun for all other suns rise only to set. The lover waits for the night for only then does beauty become visible and his ardor is decorated with kisses. To him, day is night because its light leads into darkness, whereas night is day because therein shines his true love. It is because the lover is immature that the beloved draws a veil of beauty over the face of his truth. It is because of this veil that anguished idleness begins. But when the lover sees Leela's face in the roadside dust, the beloved weeps one tear in which the lover is drowned. Smiles one smile which becomes the lover's illumination. Well, again, beautiful poetic uh, expressions. Weeps one tear in which the lover is drowned. Smiles, one smile, which becomes the lover's illumination. And then the idea of dark and light and where he re reverses uh, uh, the darkness to be the place where the beloved uh, is, right? So he reverses the light and dark analogy to the other, other side from the previous sonnet. 32, I'll continue. Uh, wait a second, there was something that was in 117. Okay, Lu was just one of the ancient prophet kings of China. And what's the next one? Taishan and Banudas. Okay, we saw that. A holy mountain in China, Meru is the same as Kailas. Uh, Banudas, see the, uh, that's uh, in connection with Pandarpur, he said uh, Banudas. Right. And then you had 123. OK, let's keep going. OK. <clears throat> 32. The Once analogy when... of darkness. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, light, uh, maybe. Uh, Duality is all dark and uh, the dawn of light is the reality. So wait in the dark uh, for the light. That's also one way he's looking at it. Absolutely. So he says his son of sons, right? The perfect ah. master is the son of sons. And mm -hmm. he says, sit down like a plant and wait his son for all other sons rise only to set. So again, powerful uh, concentration on light being the way to leave duality and go out. But then he go when he comes to the lover, he says night is where you need it, right? It is because uh, to him day is night because its light leads into darkness, whereas night is day because therein shines his true love. It is because the lover is immature that the beloved draws a veil of beauty over the face of his truth. It is because of this love and then it goes on. Yeah. Okay. 32. Once men burnt the flesh of their flesh upon altars and God was savor or not of the sacrifice. It's talking about human sacrifice. And the rain fell or didn't and the remaining flesh was lit or remained opaque and the devotee took the sun path to immortal self or the moon path another birth wrought <laughs> their lives in likeness of god's creativeness told stories in stone and words of avatars lives his acts of compassion and loveliness so that wherever people looked they saw images of god then men started telling stories about men 
and characterization and situation took the place of the attributes and deeds of God. The fields of light, the battlefields of the soul, Kurukshetra, became the wars of men fought for some woman or a strip of earth. O oh, Helen, thou, thou lovely one, hiding truth in your bright curls. So he says, historically, we started by singing the praise of the perfect master and the gods. But then slowly, it went to, then men started telling stories about men. And then it, it degenerates where, uh, so again, it's this whole uh, uh, larger point that uh, Francis makes on art should always be about God. So art, uh, if you're writing and singing, singing poetry or uh, talking uh, about other people, then it's inferior to uh, art, which is about God. That's the point. Yeah. Kuruk Chetra is a very beautiful example, actually. So winning mm -hmm. the life's war through the righteousness that the Pandavas represented. Yeah. Right? Uh, beautiful example, actually. I loved it. <laughs> yeah. no, no, beautiful example, but the context yeah. with which he says it yeah. here is on the context that as though it is a war of men fought for some woman or strip of earth, which is not what it is. Basically, war for Maya. War for Maya. Kurukshetra's exactly. representation exactly. is exactly. a war for Maya. Maya. And for Pandavas for. represent the righteousness. And, you know, and uh, the Lord was with the righteousness. Uh, he was with Arjuna. <laughs> and how the war happened, all, all of us know, you know. So, and the yeah. Gita was given during that war. Yeah. And also, and, and the I think battle Helen will die. Soul. Okay. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, the battlefield of his soul is referred to Kurukshetra. Became the wars of men fought for some woman is the next line. So they, he has made a distinction regarding Kurukshetra as a battlefield of the soul. So right and wrong, the uh, say dialogue or the struggle to do the right thing or uh, always continuing to do the wrong things, all that is depicted in Kurukshetra. So nice way of putting it across. But he has made a, a subtle difference. So battlefield of the soul, Kurukshetra, but the other things are all uh, wars fought by men for so many other reasons, maybe women, earth and all that. Very nice. I mean, it's so important here to look at these uh, punctuation marks carefully. So he uses co commas, semicolons, and uh, colons very, very, uh, uh, very, very, uh, you know, sensitively. So we'll have to be Sensitive. careful, like you rightly picked careful. up. Yeah, you, yes. like you rightly picked up. Yes, thank you. Jay Baba, <clears throat> I'll give you a Kriya Yoga interpretation. See, the battlefield, there are two types of battle. One is the inner battle of the spiritual realm and the outer battle of the material world. So Helen of Troy basically represents men fighting over a woman. Okay, there's always been, you know, Rani Padmini, you know, that happened and many other stories we know where when because of their lust and all that stuff, you know, that. So that is part of the material world. That is the outside. The Kurukshetra battle, you know, I learned from my Kriya Yoga practice from Lari Mahasaya's diaries. The Mahabharata war is an allegory for the inner battle. The Kurukshetra battle is the outer aspect, a manifestation of the inner battle that each individual faces in his life. Material attachment and material detachment. So the Pandavas represent material detachment. The five Pandavas represent the five chakras or the five elements. As you know, Bhima is air, you know, uh, air and Arjuna is fire and so on. And Duryodhana and his gang, you know, the Kurukshetra, the, the, the Kauravas represent material attachment. So basically, 
uh, even the Kumbha Mela, as I mentioned earlier, the Ganges represent the spinal cord and all the different immersion points, Haridwar, Alabad, Rishikesh, Benares, Ganga Sagar and so on, represents the chakras, you know, especially Ganga Sagar in West Bengal when the Ganges reaches the ocean, that is your seventh plane, basically. You attain union with the universal self. So interestingly, you know, the Indian mythology, you know, the saints were very smart enough to use pilgrimage as a form of entertainment, but actually the idea was to represent this inner battle that each one of us faces. So I think that the, I mean, of course, uh, I'm sorry to say, I don't think Mr. Whatever, uh, the uh, this guy who wrote this book, he doesn't know about the Kriya Yoga uh, stuff and the chakras, points and all that. But definitely the Kurukshetra Mahabharata is an allegory for that inner and outer battle that we all face, you know. So that is my interpretation. Jai Baba. Nice, nice interpretation. Thank you. It, it opens up uh, such a big area of understanding for all the sort of, uh, say, rituals, imageries, and uh, stories in our Purana. The crux of them will be always uh, driving you towards the truth. But we are lost in the uh, details of the stories and lose the core of it. Yes. So just to, just to excuse me, just to extrapolate on what he just said about rituals and ceremonies, I have this theory that when I look at the last uh, you know two hundred years and the last five thousand years of human civilization, that when we were living in our villages in a joint community, we had a very simple material life and a complicated spiritual life, and I was trying to understand why did we have this complicated spiritual life. Because it was very much understood in those days that the reason we are born is for self-emancipation. So everything we did in our daily life had to do with your spiritual life and the material life was just a medium. So what we did was we invented all these rituals and ceremonies, you know, like Ganesh Chaturthi and Gokulashtami, so that the mind is focused, you know, because the mind being, a, the, the, the mind, a, an idle mind is a devil's workshop. So the elders knew that we need to kind of focus our mind in a constructive way. So hence we had all this chanting and rituals and so on. So there is no distraction. But now what has happened in the last 200 years after the industrial revolution, which I said went for 150 years, then the information revolution, which went for 45 years from 1950 to 1995, and then the knowledge economy, 1995 to 2015, then the smartphone took off. Now we call it the creative economy, industrial revolution 4.0. So today we have disruptive technologies every seven years. Now, the funny thing about life is we have only have 24 hours, 16 hours, which has been going on for the last 5,000 years. And now people, what do you do? Like the first thing you do is when you get married and have children, you're worried about your children, which school they will go to, what kind of career you will have, your investments and insurance and all the BS that is going on. And interestingly, Baba, I, I, I kind of found out why Baba said, like, you don't need all these rituals anymore because now it's simply about relationships, how to be loving to people, you know, love and selfless service because you're seeing the self in everybody else. Try to love your enemy, you know, in whatever sense it is. So it's all a game, you know, like I said, the game of duality to get over duality. God plays G to G. So in a very interesting sense, now rituals and all these things don't have any meaning. No, actually, they have meaning initially, like a kindergarten, but we have to drop it off so that we can actually, I look at the Ramana Maharshi principle, you know, self-inquiry, you know, self-investigation. Unless you have self-knowledge, you don't know how to play the game. So that is why I think God Speaks discourses are very important literature for every individual to read because you don't need a guru like a medium. You know, these books actually allow you to investigate, analyze, contemplate, introspect, reflect, and actually reach the goal of basically getting rid of the ego, mano nash, annihilation of the mind, uh, real fana, you know, first stage of real fana. So I think all these things come down to only one basic thing, you know, getting rid of our ego. 
and uh, that is why i think what you rightly said about you know rituals they had their meaning they had their purpose and uh, but we don't need to get attached to them you know anymore care about them. and ba ba yeah i think go away to the kernel leave the husk like baba yeah. says <clears throat> okay 33 worshippers of aries we became aries i think is the god of air i think uh, ring barkers of forest silences of buddha obliterators of the pilgrim route of jesus defiling the lovely head of god in the dust dante even confining his friends and prophets in his own mind hell by god you would think any fool would know that the characters in the old testament and iliad were the heroes of god overcoming the forces on the plains of him intent on love and glorious sacrifice and the path conquerors but we had been listening to paul without angel stung railer but we had been listening to paul without angel stung railer and thinking tympanis surrounding the lovely theme of jesus with arpeggios of disorder we had imported works of decadent greeks and ponchi romans and invented literature and harnessed our space poets of science into making kitchen gadgets and guns and exploiting petroleum potential so we took the wrong inspirations and went down the wrong paths and went down the decadent greeks and ponchi romans started i think he's clearly referring to kitchen gadgets like microwave ovens which use the radiation technology that uh, we learned and then he talks about exploiting the petroleum uh, potential we'll just understand these two words i think there's quite a few new words here so just quickly see that arpeggios one second sorry i didn't realize this is not that is the word right yeah so notes of disorder so notes of a chord played in rapid succession but then repeatedly played and it's in disorder is what francis is saying and there were two other words that i wanted to see in the zone of problem the problem the problem the concept angel stump tympanist tympanist what is a tympanist Oh, okay. Person who plays a drum, so use the simple uh, two musical terms. Okay, so we'll just read those two lines just to get the uh, context right. But we had been listening to Paul without angel stung railer and thinking tympanist surrounding the lovely theme of Jesus with arpeggios of disor- disorder. And then he goes to the wrong examples that we have taken from those. Thirty-four. Uh, uh, uh. I don't know sure. much about uh, uh, say uh, Jesus uh, uh, Bible and other things, Old Testament and New Testament. So there is a uh, sort of a change from Old Testament to New Testament, which is followed by a wide uh, uh, circle now. 
whereas Old Testament is the essence of uh, the Bible, I think. That's what he is referring to, where love was touched, and that is masked out now with the new stories added. Maybe that is what he is driving to. Possible, yeah. I, I also do not know about the difference between uh, the New and the Old Testament and also if there were any specific uh, Baba references to the difference between the two, but uh, that's something to look up here. Yeah. Let's uh, continue. 34 brought our divine mind down from Azure flight, kicked out the saint in us and banished the saints to Arabia and Persia and Japan and India and began, began wave beating and foot slogging over the face of the earth with our backsides up and our noses along the ground, trying to pick up the musk scent of truth of our own navel and began bubble busy. Breakfast in Paris, lunch in Greenland, dinner and dancing on the terrace under the northern lights, temples to Aries in New York and Moscow, dress and art fashions from Paris, a new pantheon of gods and goddesses in a place called Hollywood, Elgar in England, and the church saving souls of brothel inmates and taking rent from them. USA, big brother aid to the whole world, using a thousand steel helmeted troops to subdue a township and coming second in satellite race. He covers quite a lot of ground here, but then he it's a it's a telling statement of how things have been. So he says we have just banished the saints to Arabia and Persia and Japan and India. And uh, he uses the analogy Baba uses as well, which is the Kasturi Mriga. So we have pick up the musk scent of truth of our own navel. So we are on the ground and trying to smell our own, find our own navel. And then he gives a, again the example of breakfast in Paris and our fast paced lives where we're trying to do so much in a day. And uh, then, yeah, <laughs> this is a beautiful phrase. And the church saving souls of brothel inmates and taking rent from them. So uh, there is the practice. Probably he's referring to the practice of uh, the way where you could pay to uh, undo your sins, right? So you could you could pay a tax to the church. This this was uh, 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 this was what uh, the 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 church imposed. They they said that you could come and confess your sins and actually pay a amount and then God, uh, you know, lets you go. He, he forgives you. So in that sense, he says, saving the souls of brothel inmates and taking rent from them. Beautiful, beautiful words. And then also he beats up, beats up America a little bit. He says, big brother, aid to the whole world. And then uh, using huge powers to go and subdue small townships and then finally coming second in the space race. 35 and the five perfect masters quietly cognizing the world of gangrenous limbs and squint eyedness. Walled city world overlooking spent form desert of accomplishment and saying among themselves. It's time to bring him down again. He, the avatar of God, for another spell of world truing and course setting, because his lovers cannot much longer breathe with any degree of comfort. So they brought him, who was called Manu, and Noah, and Zarathustra, and Siva, and Rama, and Krishna, and Buddha, and Jesus, and Muhammad down and gave him birth and watched over him with their mother tenderness and their father solicitude and brought him the ancient one and the newest one again to his God manness and handed over to him 
the seal and the key and themselves returned to the ineffable mountain of retirement. So the seal and the key of running the universe. So Sai Baba gave it to Baba and so on, right? Kutub e Irshad. 36. Uh, in that list, uh, he mentions yeah. Manu. Manu and Nova, yeah. yeah. So this could uh, be minor avatars. This could be minor avatars as per Francis's reading, because again, we do not maybe, know if Baba maybe. has mentioned this. Yeah. But, uh, and uh, even Shiva. What I wanted to tell was, all our uh, stories of gods and all starts with Manu. They, is it uh, is it almost yes, like yes. a Adam kind of thing, Manu? Ah, is he the it looks like that. In, yeah, he's the first human. Uh, uh, hmm. yes. Correct. So yeah, that's interesting, but uh, not conclusive. We don't have conclusive evidence to say that he was a, he was important enough or mentioned ah, by true. Baba elsewhere. We do not know. Yeah, oh, the point. Okay. okay. 36 and he knew those who were to be his disciples and he called them to him in love and service in gentleness and warriorship for that war which men ape in their little wars and took them out on the roads breathing his only breathing his own lovely name on the breath of their utterance with each step wiping away from their faces with his mother hand the sweat and dust of the world and as father exampling them and inuring them to the trials and hardships of manhood and set out with them to the haunts of his lovers the musts and saints in jungles and mount mountain fastnesses and by roadsides and in cities and embraced them and fed them and sent them on the next stage of their journey and fed the poor and bowed his head down to their feet himself being the poorest among them and even visited the west where lived the most poor of his poor. So he he loves this. Uh, uh, what should I say? Using two meanings, right? So in, in, in four lines, there are two meanings to the word poor, right? So mm -hmm. in the first, he says he fed the poor and bowed down his head down to their feet and says himself being the poorest among them. Then he says the reverse in the next line. He says, and even visiting the West, where live the most poor of his poor. So here it is the spiritual richness that is lacking in the West, and that's the reference being made. So, yeah, 37. And allowed his body to be broken and the pain of the world to be centered in his pain. And has done no miracles except the miracle of love raised no dead but urged us to die to ourselves given no sight to the blind but helped us become blind to illusion i tell you on my divine authority that they belittle jesus who attribute his greatness to mere miracles which any fourth planer still wrapped in illusion himself can perform these are Baba's words. Baba has said that saying, attributing greatness to Jesus because of the miracles and documenting them and eulogizing them and praising them is so shallow because of mere fourth planer can do this. And the fourth planer is still wrapped in illusion, right? Continuing, manifested unlimitedness in limitation established divinity in the midst of barbarism brought lovely art love's pure act again upon earth raised once again 
the banner ablaze with gathered brightness of love god that men again shall joy in the work of works of their hands and in love and remember that they are the sons of god and god so you're both sons of god and god 38 thus and thus it will ever be the one as jesus raising again the banner of moses draggled in the wind and those who really loved moses fled to his feet as jesus and folded their hands before him and cast down their hearts before his again brightness and the one as muhammad raising again the banner of jesus bleached by willful interpretation and those who loved jesus with somewhat of the love with which he should be loved flocked to him exalting in god's mercy and towardness and the one as baba and those who are of the law and the love and humanity are dancing with new joy and casting themselves in surrenderance and measured abandon into his fire of melting and remolding nearer to soul's vision of true heart shape thus it will ever be the cry of the dawn and the weeping before the risen sun 39 because you are love which is existence which is knowledge which is bliss you always gave out the heart doctrine love me love me but you have found it necessary also to take up swords and whips you have accepted thorns and arrows and crucifixions but you have rolled many heads in the dust and stripped many of their all except god therefore you are known by some as the lamb and by others as the lion to some you are fullness and to some emptiness to some the treasure keeper and bestower to some the only poor one and great beggar you beg a morsel of our love oh god and give us our divine self again a beautiful expression back to art now 40 art is an act of love the shock whereby the soul awakens to awareness of itself and understands that the world is the shadow of the real that everything is passing except his face and that all experience has but one purpose and end to cause one to renounce the world as an empty dream art is an act of love the cry of the devotee as a sword in his heart cutting an accommodation in which the sun of majesty and loveliness may rise and the furnace of tears and the smokeless fire of secret sighs and the blood turning to milk and death in eternal existence art is the loveliness of god embodied in a man god as that man in his lovely acts to men so very very clear message on what is art right and there's a, another illustration so that ends part 2 of the book and we go to part 3 anybody remembers how many parts we have in this 
This is the this. No, part three of book four. This is. Yeah, yeah, I know. How many? How many okay. parts in book book four? Uh, book. I think four. Uh, I think, okay. Uh, I are. This is the last one. Probably. I don't know. <clears throat> I just scan through last week, but uh, I think this is the last part of the book four. Yeah, I just went back to seeing this here. If you if you remember this uh, slide, so there are four parts, and so we are now down to the last part. Parts each each of the parts have forty uh, sonnets, and then we have the coda. So that's that's the last. So it's five books. The fifth book has four parts. We're just starting. The fourth part. Clear? Got yeah. Yep. Let's get started. So this is part three. Sorry. So we have part forty three. of part three, and then forty more of uh, part four. Okay. Let's get uh, going. Part three. Part one. Return, O oh man. O brother and sister of me, return, O myself, before the tide turns at his speaking. And we are carried by his Noah's flood with a word like fools, drunk in an open boat on the ocean to the way of art and God. Stay with God, for he is not only the almighty creator, but our brother and friend. His counsel is better than the wit of men, for he is deathless, and men are born to die. He is knowledge and existence, and knows all the paths to him, and leads those by the short path who surrender their path to him. He stirs up and urges forward. He retards and holds back the right time. He drives one on to glorious victory, he hurls another into defeat. Andro Marche shall not receive of the Hector Philide's glorious arms, for this would be to rob Thetis of victory whom God had promised. I remember that there is a note now. Andro Marche is the wife of Hector, the greatest champion among the Trojans. And yeah, so it's again back to Iliad. So Hector is uh, very, very, uh, I think Hector is the best uh, swordsman and the best warrior. So there's some obviously story to link to that. And further, he says Philippe uh, is, is Achilles, is another name for Achilles. Thetis is the mother of Achilles. And Achilles is would rob Thetis of victory whom God had promised. So looks like there is a uh, 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 there is a suggestion that God had promised victory to Hector, to Hector's mother, which is uh, no, not not victory to Hector, victory to uh, Achilles. Achilles' mother was Thetis, and she was promised by God that uh, uh, Achilles will prevail and win. And uh, that's what happens in that story, I, I believe. OK, art is a statement in praise his craft in us. Fashioning us in likeness of himself. The perfect masters, his consummate works, the saints nearing completion, us his beginnings. He is the only singer. He sings the creation and his singing supports and destroys it. As poet, he gives us scriptures for our guidance. In the saints, he sings his own praises and dances because he loves dance. He builds cathedrals and temples and mosques, carving their columns in exact variety, cuts and paints figures of himself on their walls for his love of proportion and as textbooks for us 
of right living. His is the only iconography of the real. That of ourselves that we do is from the labored breathing of unseen, unhearing, and divisional thinking. Dreamers depicting in dream a monstrous confusion of dreaming. A tree is a tree. It is not creative, but reproductive. A man Karthik, is a... Yeah. Uh, the last uh, sonnet, uh, first three lines are uh, very sort of a depression of uh, different uh, stages uh, or people in the different stages of the path. Mm -hmm. His craft is in us fashioning as likeness of himself. The perfect masters, his consummate works, the saints nearing completion as his beginnings. So this shows the gradation. Yeah. So we are in the beginning, then the saints who are nearing the completion uh, in the different yeah. uh, upper planes, his consummate works, perfect masters are doing his work. They are already there. Fashioning as a likeness of himself. Nice expressions. Very nice, very nice. So he's basically saying we are going to be fashioned in likeness of himself. Yes. Yeah, that is know. the ultimate self. Biggest self. Yeah. Biggest, biggest, yeah. I'll continue. A tree is a tree. It is not creative but reproductive a man is a man and likewise creates nothing the image is already in the stone the bridge in steel awaiting revealment and spanning at the world of god in a man's hand mind which prompts us we are the doer is a mirror house of distorting in which self is deluded by being imaged as everything other than self. A man as a man can cease from foolishness and begin to love, begin to repeat the name of God in his heart. Seek in his heart the beloved's lovely face. Wait patiently for a word or a note or some intimation of his form and make his many notes and words and outlines pleasing to love's ears and eyes. Only one become one may create. Wow. Only one become one may create. The only reason for reviving painful experiences is to mature one's outlook not feed excitement in others, sowing in them the seed of future pain, excusing it as legitimate communication. And he who was to become the Buddha, the inspirer of his time, the rest and spring of men for the next 500 years, was sheltered from pain until his mature mind could grasp it and subdued it. Being dragged through hell by the heels or dreaming in van dream, a star in lieu of a ripening breast. I'd life her have a kiss on the moor, she said, sprawling a nude across a canvas in rebe rebellion or peopling dead woods with faded musk or dryer are neither material nor impetus for art. Where is the Brahmin who taught me? What splinters of Brahma by the grace of the true teacher might have informed them? So he's saying all the wrong things that art has focused on, right? Uh, and he says, where is the true teacher and where is the uh, uh, the true art. 
God made sense turn outward. Therefore, man looks out. Now and again, a daring man looks back and finds himself. Now and again, after becoming God, he speaks. This speaking is the first art. Often on the homeward track, as the divine image becomes clear in outline and volume, he sings its praises. This is the second art, the lovers drowning in the sweetness of love's smile. A Jesus, the way, an Ali, a door. Now and again, a man sees by God's grace, God in another man, and there surrender himself to him. Becomes clay in the master's hands to be molded into truly human form or canvas for a new portrait, truthful in line, exact in volume and lovely in content. Yeah, he's talking of surrenderings to master. Exactly, exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Beautiful words. God in another man and uh, actually from here. Now and again, a man sees by God's grace, God in another man and dares surrender himself to him. It needs a lot yeah. of courage. Man, so I, yeah, I, I, I it, love that. No, no. Exactly. The, the most beautiful part is, again, a man sees by God's grace. By God's grace. No. Yes, yes. <laughs> Every that word is yeah. beautiful. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> very, very beautiful. By God's grace, God in another man and dares surrender to himself. So in spite of the grace, you need a lot of courage to surrender himself to that master. And if he does that, he becomes clay in the master's hands to be molded into truly human form or canvas for a new portrait, truthful in line, exact in volume, and lovely in content. So, two art. Six, the art of God and his finished works. The living men. Vamadeva said, my glory is like the mountain tops. Lao Tse said, how I glory on the breast of my mother. Uwe Neng said, you read it to me, I'll tell you what it means. Ibn Arabi said, my heart is a pasture for gazelles and a convent for monks. Sri Hamsa said, I am an instrument played on by the divine hand. Inayat Khan said, Everywhere I look, I see thy winning face. Francis said, brother, son, and he wasn't poetizing. One said, every day a new heaven is under my feet. One said, two that are your masters are my slaves. One said, circumambulate me and your pilgrimage is finished. Atar said, the road was but myself towards myself. About these, alone in self-perfected glory, and who alone directly comes down is God's avatar. So all the above examples yeah. are, are some perfect masters or masters Correct. or people Correct. who are Correct. guiding, but he gives the avatar the highest status. Go 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 up a bit again. Sure. Who is who is saying something no? earlier? Third line. Or yeah. Hui Neng. Hui Neng. Hui Neng. You read it to you me. It. I'll tell. I'll tell you what it means. We can connect it to God speaks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Baba has said, just read it. Grace. If, even yeah, if you don't understand, just read it. <laughs> Good one. Good comparison. So, is there something? Khatopanishad on 124. 
Are we on 124? Oh, how did we miss that? So God made uh, in likeness of himself, right? I think that's that's where Kato Upanishad. And uh, this also in this, uh, uh, this sonnet uh, Buddha's reference, the uh -huh. first time I came to uh, the say awakening that uh, Buddha's uh, say going out of the family, uh, looking at somebody in distress, uh, was sort of uh, some Baba John working on uh, Buddha. So making that uh, avatar awaken to his, yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> reality, his, that, his uh, real nature. <laughs> Yes, good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they all and in this uh, one ways, example uh, of uh, circumambulate me and your pilgrimage is finished. This refers to Ganesha, Ganesha maybe, yeah. maybe, yeah, Ganesha, yeah. possible. Yeah, Jay Baba, we you, don't know the uh, yeah, you know, we don't we have to remember that each time the avatar comes, he comes with a pre scripted divine plan. Yes. So nothing happens without a reason, whether it's a Buddha, Jesus, Muhammad, everything is pre-planned as to when he comes and which part of the globe he comes and what kind of operating system he kind of communicates, you know. I mean, it's all part of the divine imagination because if we are all part of the self, then it's basically an amusement that we are having. The self consciousness is having a kind of an amusement with itself. You know, like we say, creation wants to know itself. So the whole of creation is like an arena. We are like the gladiators, you know, coming and playing our game and figuring out how to self-emancipate. So to me, in the big picture, you know, as we all know that Baba Savatar's definition is, he was also like us, a drop soul. Only thing is he became chairman emeritus. I think we should not forget that. So he's just a coach or a guide for us. And we should basically go for union with the self. And that is the ultimate goal. You know? Jai Baba. Yeah. I continue. Seven. Our works are but a crying toward these men. A cry from bondage to their pure release. A movement in the dark towards their light. Like leaves and twigs and branches in the night. Moved by the wind and dreaming of the sun. A turning. Once, when we knew singing in delight, spontaneously as flowers to the sky, making our world around us glad with song. Now, with remorse and tearings and reaching back to that which holds us, like roots of grass, uptone with a chisel plow clinging to earth, like drinkers drunk still clinging to the glass, or merely petulant as children, called at mealtime, still wanting play. Excursioners returning weary, wanting more. Beautiful words. I will continue. I think it was pretty straightforward, analogical. A lot of analogical references. Eight, the world also is food. Therefore, the real artists meditated on the world entrusted them by their teacher and disciplined their seeing to his form till their eyes brightened with tears and praise escaped them. Then at his command, they in their turn spoke to the people in words or notes or line or chiseled plane, and the people were astonished. And being thus fed, fed in their turn with the word of their work, the earth, and the breath of God through the masters and saints, brought the rains and the sun in due season. 
and when floods came or drought they did not huddle in fear or curse the sky but looked into their hearts to find the sin and adjusted their sacrifice to the laws of nature and god without a word of the word in one's heart without a reflection of his light whose seventh shadow is the physical sun in one's eyes that is without the sacrifice having been made which is savior to god which is savor to god no food food nourishes but is poison which paralyzes and finally kills us to our essential self with bricks of dead tissue do we build our vast hospitals with the steel of maimed minds do we forge the knife which performs the operation the world of nature helpless from our helplessness weeps and from her over much tears roll the floods and from her shame and burning shines the sun of drought weeping and burning is nature because of our heedlessness and the winds finding no home return to god so the artist if he is to sing or write or paint or play in truth in praise of love may not himself but first find the golden thread by which he moves the lovely note from which he has continuous becoming then find the holder of the thread the lovely singer and offer him his body speech and mind in service nor asking in return the gift of art or anything for even this finding and surrenderance is by grace grace which puts us under the eternal obligation of repayment heaven and earth move by the word alone and it moves out from silence the mover is the perfect master who holds the thread which binds each one together in one gathered piece of movement who sings the song which is our sighs and tears our well directed thought and sudden laughter so he describes perfect masters and our relationship with him 11 once we knew the lovely form and voice of art and trained our children to read its messages cut in wind and fire and earth and sculpted in fullness in the human form taught them the true sacrifice tao taught them the times of sow- sowing grain in the earth grain in the heart and their proper tendons taught them the facts of irrigation of body mind and earth taught them the true scales and modes taught them the name of god that name in us which made our songs which danced before his altars in our hearts and guided our hands in cutting his memorials but even then at times the blood carrier of light darkened and we lost our way then we prayed and offered the first born 
of our loves. And he came with his shining love again and retrued our vision and retaught his name. So if we forget, if we uh, become weak in our resolve to keeping art to God and basically lose our way, the avatar comes back. And that's what he says here. 12. So to Muhammad's time, a journey continuous from us to God and direct from God to us. And for a thousand years after, when the twilight of our present night set in, And we no longer worked and loved with our eyes upon the image in our hearts. We looked out and stared at the horizon. Blank with promise of release from our restricted forms. We looked out and set out to know whether. With oars creaking in row lock and flag hoisted beyond sail at masthead, wave beating the waves that beat upon our ships, scurvy and lice ridden, our beards and eyes wet with salt of strange seas, and our weeping, not for yellow gold and fine silks and new foods to glut our glutting, but for a new God to enthrone above God, one greater than Jesus and Muhammad, who would not require us of sacrifice and prayer. 13, so he's talking of the journey of how humanity started looking for the next one. And we easily found him since he was also looking for us. In fact, he had accompanied us in our laborious ships and appeared on the land before us. Then he landed and greeted us and initiated us in service. His name was Ares and his bedfellow Aphrodite. And they showed us the new altar building and its rites. But our seamen, thick muzzled fools of the ore, still clung to Jesus. And we would sometimes come upon them secretly remembering him. So we slew Jesus on Ares' altar and told the men he had died, but that his spirit would be upon them if he yielded us good service. Christ Ares, two, but in reality, one. And Aphrodite, Aphrodite's city to sack for our pleasure and to please our men we wrote them a book with tunes in it they could easily sing second yeah so let's just check if there's any Notes here, no, 129 is the note. Okay, so he's, he's talking about waiting after Christ and how we get misled by Aries and Aphrodite. And let's continue, 14. But because the word of God may not be denied, the words of his word, love one God and thy neighbor, think, speak, and act truthfully and have compassion on all things. Not only did lovely art become lost to us, lost along symphonic horizons and among bodor pianos, pianos and mulish metrics, but nature herself, ever loving and dutiful to God and weeping for his dear son, pierced by arrows and thorns and bruised by stones, revolted, assumed new forms of terrible disease, drained floods, burned the lands with drought, 
gave Earth's choicest soils back to the oceans and poisoned the last drops of the divine springs of human affection. So that the tender word now only growls in our throats and love's glance freezes in our eyes or bulges belligerency and our no parents children sweep the pavements with their eyelashes looking for God. Beautiful. 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 It is Absolutely. talking about how, how the humanity has disconnected itself from God. From God. So no, nature itself has taken a kind of a revenge on humanity, you know, creating barren land, sea taking over land, and the diseases that have, uh, you know, come up uh, uh, for humanity to face. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. You must highlight Beautiful. this uh, paragraph. Yeah. And as you said, this is about Earth, I mean, uh, nature. Sweeping pavements with their eyelashes than... looking for God. <laughs> Last line is so telling. Uh, mm -hmm. Rather than the, his, his messages, I think there was a beautiful line in the front, in, in the beginning, uh, mm -hmm. which, uh, which, which was the message of God, after which it started saying how we got uh, embroiled or uh, entangled in uh, in the orchestra and you know all that yeah yeah so these lines right um that are those lines so much to the back the four lines about love thy neighbor uh and all that correct correct yeah 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 yeah, yeah correct correct yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, right here. Love God, love the one God and love thy neighbor. Think, speak and act truthfully. Have compassion on all things. We just love, lost that. Yeah. Yes. 15. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Let me continue. 15. With Renaissance, we denied the saint of us, left the house of love and marched out, attending the earth with our shod feet and trumpets and settled in foreign lands and occupied ourselves feeding the swine of appetite broke ourselves off from the tree of knowledge and planted the branch in sour soil where it withered and died peeled ourselves off from the stem of sweet nourishment and found it trash in our hand we made instruments of dissection and measurement to examine our condition and ask of the stars. Built ships and planes and journeyed round the earth and into the skies and asked them and drooled over non finding in poetry and music and painted our wretchedness into portraits of caricature, turned our universities. It says universe cities, cities. <laughs> <laughs> into distribution centers of work tickets and sent armies back to our parent house to loot its treasury. So universities are no longer learning, so they're just distribution centers of work tickets. Work tickets. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. Just a way Very to nice. get a job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's George Orwell's 1984, where he had written mm -hmm. this in the 1930s. George Orwell was born in India, actually. He went to Eton and all that. And yeah. uh, that clearly talked about what's happening, what's going on now. And I think this paragraph represents the industrial revolution and uh, the pharmaceutical industry, basically, you know, putting fear into people about different diseases and also what we are seeing about artwork, you know, that today, uh, you know, the art collectors pay 20, 10 to 100 million to 200 million dollars for works of art. 
uh, especially when the artist has even died as a pauper, you know, like uh, there were so many famous artists, we you know. And uh, so I think it's basically about the condition of the world and uh, that, uh, you know, it's, it's just a representation of what's going on now. But I, I look at it from a different point of view also. Unless we go through these kind of turmoil, you know, discord, disturbances, each one as an individual won't dissect ourselves, you know. Uh, unless you go through suffering, you know, Baba said suffering is my special prasad to my lovers because it is apparent suffering. We know that because we don't suffer when we go to sleep. You know, anybody, whether you're a physical or mental patient or both, so I think in that sense, it's all God's imagination out here. And the only thing we can do is because we have taken this human form, human body, and then we have a coach like Mayor Baba to help us. What is the real purpose of life or creation, which Baba says is the happiness of God realization, which I'm still pondering about. You know, when you're already self-realized, when you know who you are, that you are a walking Buddha, but you have to experience that and you have to behave like God. So I think that is the biggest challenge for all of us. But I believe that all these uh, so-called wars and everything that we see, whether it's in the Mahabharata war and the Ramayana war or during World War One, World War, and on the current war that we are seeing, you know, I think the biggest war is the environmental violence more than people fighting each other. So which we are all directly and indirectly involved in terms of we use plastic, in terms of using elevators where we can use staircases and so on and so forth. I think that is a kind of education that's that's what we need today to simplify our life, high thinking and simple life, and try to focus on the real uh, purpose of our being born as a human being. Hey, Baba. Well said. Well yes. said indeed. Yeah. No, that uh, purpose of being born, that is totally lost. Say, earlier when I was a child and when I was growing up uh, into a youth, uh, the left ideology made a lot of effort, effort in corrupting my mind as I look it, look upon today. So the purpose of life uh, is to find God. This message never is given to the children. So that is what is the corrupting thing. So if we can rekindle this in children, so they can, can look around, uh, use all the materials uh, with this purpose in mind, then it will be uh, worthwhile living in this world. Uh, uh, but uh, what you say is correct, but you have to remember that children look upon their parents. And as we know from Shakespeare's uh, life is a comedy, there are seven stages of life. So I don't think there is no point imposing on the children about God in the first eight or 12 years, you know, depending on how long you live, you know. Uh, like I say, from seven years to 12 year phase, you know, each phase, 49 years to 84 years, how long you live. So bottom line is, I think children are looking at their peers. So the parents and society and the environment has to be conducive so that the children are able to imbibe naturally and spontaneously what are the real values of life. So I think that what you went through as a leftist is also an experience because it was a medium yes. through which you have come now here. And I think that all of us who have gone through many different so-called bad experiences or not so good experiences actually when you look back they are all meant to be where we are right now and i've always asked this question to myself do i feel better about myself now than what happened to me many years ago you know and i really feel that uh, at least from my side that everything happened for a reason whether we call it good or bad but the beauty about it is how does one feel well, how does one feel about oneself right now? Do we feel good about yourself? Do we have enough self-knowledge to know what is the next, uh, how do we uh, trace our future path, you know, or how to live in the present and so on? You know? So I think that, you know, and Vedanta, as they say, you don't get what you want, you get what you deserve. So I thought that was a very harsh statement, 
but in a sincere way i think it is all based on sanskaras everybody is where they are and i've been reading a lot of books on the afterlife and all that and we see that we actually come to this planet earth with a prescripted plan which we are not conscious of right that is how the whole divine script is designed that you don't know about your past lives you just have an inkling and of course baba has said that once you are on the planes when you are ready for it you will be able to recognize all those different births that you had as a man or as a woman and all the different experiences so i think in that sense everything is fine you know i am okay you are okay you know kind of thing you know jai baba yes yes as long as you keep learning and moving for the not uh, uh, squatting at the same place without uh, any inkling of what is uh, ahead of you intelligent action yes intelligent action so script scripting is only to a degree right so scripting yep. does not mean that we need to become fatalists and just go through the motions intelligent action and uh, make the best of this uh, life and uh, only, make it uh, yeah scripting yeah oh, sorry yeah, scripting is only what you are today for the future you exactly. have to do right action right so, that's it <laughs> that's correct simple i e what is that uh, thing intense effort and infinite patience <laughs> yes intense effort intense longing infinite patience see unless you have intense longing you want to have intense effort right yeah right? yeah so that's a good point yeah have that intense longing that you believe in something you have faith in something and then you put on that particular effort and we always know that when you're passionate about something you always effort is natural that's effort whether your the outcome is positive or negative so in a way all human beings the time they wake up whether you are in the seven stages of life are either doing intelligent action unwinding sanskaras consciously or unconsciously or unintelligent action spending sanskaras which is reacting to our sanskaras that's it correct in a very clinical sense so i think that it has to be entertaining i think that is why we are good storytellers why this guy wrote this book stay with god i mean he's a poet you know he's an amazing guy actually he built the sydney baba center also meher mount if you read about this guy he was a total karma yogi and he was very intelligent also you know he was part of the sufism reoriented and uh, so i think in that sense francis was a real real hard worker you know typical western karma yogi and uh, yes i'm not a great uh, you know what he called fan of his poems because it's his own you know his own insights you know and uh, so i think that all our life is like an adventure like a divine sport and i think we need to kind of look at it from that point of view and uh, you know go ahead with our life you know jai baba yes uh, uh, one small two line uh, 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 say um, uh, intuition into me because of all this poetry being read and all we start as a scripted body and we need to script ourselves for future soul jai baba Yeah, exactly. Just script. So we come into being in life with a script already written, but we have the uh, capability of uh, uh, writing a new script for the future. So that we will have to do intelligently. That's what uh, we have to exactly. learn out of all these things. i guess uh, the script is already written for example that well, well, if yeah if you are what you are today is the result of what you did in the past so what you today will determine what you be in the future so that's a so, logical <laughs> the director is there that is baba and you have to act in this movie of life when we wake up we are in a reality show we put on our makeup right now we are having a reality show we are having this discussion 
and hopefully feel good about it and learn something or unlearn our ignorance. So I think that the script is flowing by itself. You don't have to actually plan anything. The only thing you need to plan is your material life, you know, your career and writing your bills and paying your income taxes. That is very much of the material aspect, just like taking care of the body, you got to eat food. But in the spiritual realm, it is all about spontaneity, you know, and being in flow. I mean, it's about being, not becoming. You know, I was, I hope uh, I've sent that the link of Ramana Maharishi about who am I, that is talking about uh, uh, knowing consciousness and being consciousness. And then this other dude from Vedanta Institute uh, called Sarvapriyananda Swami, he has a talk called Knowing and Being. And he said that knowing is being, which I think is wrong, you know. Uh, but anyway, that's for another uh, thing. But I will send you that link and listen to it because it's very incredible, you know, that particular talk. Jai Baba. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Jai Baba, uh, tomorrow I may not be, unfortunately, I may not be joining because I'll be traveling. Uh, anyway, I will listen to the recordings later. Okay, uh, okay. before we, I'll just yes. stop recording, but then uh, please stay back. I just wanted to uh, uh, quickly discuss on uh, the uh, some action steps that we had as follow up to our proposal. Uh, Kama, you had something else to say? No, I was just going to mention what you have just, uh, you know, you were just saying that, yeah, go ahead about the youth service and what is our uh, proactive uh, action that needs to be done. Yeah. Yeah. So from the people on this call, one second, why am I not able to stop recording for whatever reason? Okay. Stop recording. Not here. Sorry. You have to dismiss that line, is it? Um, dismiss what? No, that blue line which is which is stating recording has started has a button at the end, dismiss. So if you dismiss it. Yeah, yeah. I did that. I did that dismissal <laughs> long back. Good. Okay. So. That's just intimational, but uh, my Teams is acting up. So can I just disconnect and call back, please? So that we don't. Oh, yes. Yep. Uh,